Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India last lecture of the lecture series on integral differential equation under the NPTEL courses. Uh, in all previous lectures, we have considered linear integral equations only. In this lecture, I am going to discuss about some solutions and properties of non-linear integral equations. Of course, there are a wide variety of different types of nonlinear integral equations and it is not possible to discuss all those type of equations in this single lecture. But I just want to give you some essence of this nonlinear integral equations because they produces two interesting properties of the solutions. Number one is the bifurcation of solution and with help of this type of nonlinear integral equation we can explain the concept of singular solution. And another important property that we can explain that some of the nonlinear integral equations or you can say most of them uh, do not have unique solutions. With illustrative example, uh, I will try to illustrate this phenomena that how non-uniqueness of the solutions comes into the picture. So, we will be considering two types of nonlinear integral equations that is nonlinear integral equations we may consider this y x equal to f x plus lambda integral a to b k x comma s g of y s d s. This is a nonlinear integral equation of freedom type. And nonlinear Volterra integral equation can be written as y x equal to f x plus lambda integral a to x k of x comma s g of y s d s. This is of Volterra type, where this g capital G is a function of y which is a nonlinear function of y. And some example of this type of equations are y x is equal to 1 plus lambda integral 0 to 1 s of y square s d s. In this example, g is actually g y is actually y square. Similarly, another example is y x equal to x minus 5 by 6 plus integral 0 to 1 y s plus y square s d s. This is an uh, freedom type integral equations and one Volterra type nonlinear integral equation is y x equal to 1 minus x square minus x cube by 3 plus integral 0 to x y square s d s. These are some nonlinear uh, freedom and Volterra type integral equations. And of course, these g may be some function like e to the power x, sin x, and some other combinations such that they are nonlinear functions. Once this g x is a nonlinear function of y, then equations of this type are actually known as nonlinear integral equations. So, first of all, we discuss the direct computation method to solve uh, nonlinear 
freedom integral equation. So, we are going to discuss direct computation method for nonlinear freedom integral equation. So, equation is y x equal to f x plus lambda integral a to b k of x comma s g of y s d s and this direct computation method to solve nonlinear freedom integral equation is applicable whenever this kernel is a separable kernel. So, that means, we are assuming the kernel k x comma s is of the form sigma r runnings from 1 to n p r x q r s, this is the kernel. Now, for simplicity of understanding of the method by which we can solve this equation, we assume here k x comma s is only product of two functions p x and q s. Assuming this particular format, we are going to discuss about the direct computation method to solve this uh, freedom integral equation, which is a nonlinear equation. And with illustrative example, we will be considering that kernel is not a just product of two functions, one is a function of x and other is a function of x, but it is a sum of two this type of uh, separable kernels. So, if we have this format for k x comma s, then the given nonlinear freedom integral equation can be written as y x equal to f x plus lambda p x integral a to b q s g of y s d s and you can recall that linear freedom integral equation with separable kernel we have considered uh, and solved by using the direct computation method where instead of g y s here the terms appear to be a to b q r s y s d s and we have assumed each of these integrals a to b q r s y s d s those are constants. So, in the same manner here we assume beta equal to integral a to b q s g of y s d s and therefore, we have y x is equal to f x plus beta lambda p x. So, this is a tentative expression for y x. Now, if we substitute this expression for y x equal to that is f x plus beta lambda p x into the definition for beta, we find that beta equal to integral a to b q s g of f s plus beta lambda p s d s. Depending upon the nature of this nonlinear function g and explicitly solvability of this integral, we can find an equation involving beta and we can solve this equation for beta to get values or expression for beta in terms of the parameter lambda. And this lambda plays a crucial role in order to existence of solutions or existence of values or expression for beta which you can see from the forthcoming examples. And depending upon the nature of the solution, if we substitute the expression for beta into the 
previous result that is y x equal to f x plus beta lambda uh, p x, we can find the solution to the given problem. So, this is actually the method of direct computation to solve nonlinear Volterra integral equation. So, first we consider one example y x is equal to 1 plus lambda integral 0 to 1 s y square s d s. This is the given problem. So, we assume beta equal to integral 0 to 1 s y square s d s. With this assumption from the given equation, we find y x this is equal to 1 plus beta lambda. Now, if we substitute this expression for y x in the expression for beta, then we can find beta equal to integral 0 to 1 s 1 plus beta lambda whole square d s and evaluating this integral, we find this is equal to 1 plus beta lambda whole square multiplied by half and rearranging the terms of beta from both sides, we can find a quadratic equation for beta as beta square lambda square plus 2 beta multiplied with lambda minus 1 plus 1, this is equal to 0. So, this is a quadratic equation in beta, whose coefficients are functions of lambda and solving for beta, we can find beta equal to 2 into 1 minus lambda plus minus root over 4 lambda minus 1 whole square minus 4 lambda square divided by 2 lambda square and after simplification, this, this comes out to be 1 minus lambda plus minus root over 1 minus 2 lambda divided by lambda square. So, these are actually two values of beta. Now, in this case, uh, if we assume that y x is a real valued function, then integral 0 to 1 s y square s d s should be a real constant. And therefore, for real values of beta from this expression, we are getting a restriction on lambda that is 1 minus 2 lambda should be greater than equal to 0. So, real values of beta can be obtained for lambda this is less than equal to half and substituting these expressions for beta into 1 plus beta lambda, we can find that two solutions are given by y x is equal to 1 plus minus root over 1 minus 2 lambda divided by lambda. Now, this expression is little bit interesting, little bit interesting in the sense, first of all you can observe that whenever lambda less than half, we find two solutions, one is 1 plus root over 1 minus 2 lambda divided by lambda and other is 1 minus root over 1 minus 2 lambda divided by lambda. So, this clearly shows that the problem has two solutions. So, therefore, we are not getting unique solution for the given problem, although both these solutions are actually constant. So, that means y x equal to constant, this is a solution to the nonlinear integral equation, but we are getting two solutions. Secondly, both these solution coincides to the Solu one solution whenever lambda equal to half. For lambda equal to half, we can find that both the solution coincides to 2 only. So, now this is the most important point that lambda equal to half, this is actually called bifurcation point. And the phenomena that for lambda equal to half, we have 
only one solution for lambda less than half we are getting two solutions that is 1 plus root over 1 minus 2 lambda by lambda and 1 minus root over 1 minus 2 lambda by lambda. These two solutions are actually bifurcating from the unique solutions obtained at lambda equal to half. So, this phenomena is called bifurcation of solutions and this type of bifurcation in uh, actually appears in most of the um, discussions on nonlinear dynamics involved with nonlinear equations. So, this is one simple example of nonlinear integral equation where bifurcation of solutions may comes into the picture. And another important aspect is that if we consider that lambda equal to 0, if we consider lambda equal to 0 from the given problem we find y x equal to 1 is a solution and this particular solution y x equal to 1 cannot be obtained from the solution that we have derived that is y x equal to 1 plus minus root over 1 minus 2 lambda divided by lambda and this particular solution y x equal to 1 is actually called the singular solution. And another important observation is that as y x equal to 1 plus minus root over 1 minus 2 lambda divided by lambda. So, there does not exist any real solution whenever lambda greater than half. So, with help of this particular simple example, we have explained three important points. Number 1, the concept of bifurcation of solution. Number 2, the existence of singular solution and number 3, that uh, solution depends upon the parameter for certain range of values of lambda we are getting two solutions and for certain range of values of lambda there does not exist any real solution for the given problem. So, all this situation most of the time come up with the case of nonlinear integral equation. Now, we consider one more example of a nonlinear freedom integral equation where lambda is exactly equal to 1. So, that means there is no uh, parameter is involved, equation is free from the parameter. With this example that just we have considered, it appears to our mind that whenever lambda is involved, then we can find two solutions. But next example will explain that instead of for a particular value of lambda, still for nonlinear integral equation we can have more than one solution. So, in that case also there is no question of uniqueness of the solutions. Second example is y x this is equal to x minus 5 by 6 plus integral 0 to 1 y s plus y square s d s. So, this y s plus y square s in this case is actually our g s. Although this y s separately is a linear function, but y s plus uh, y square s is a nonlinear function. Now, we define two quantities beta 1 and beta 2, they are defined respectively by 0 to 1 y s d s and beta 2 this is equal to integral 0 to 1 y square s d s. So, with these definitions we can write the given equation is y x is equal to x minus 5 by 6 plus beta 1 plus beta 2. So, using this tentative expressions for y x that is equal to x minus 5 by 6 plus beta 1 plus beta 2. In the formula for beta 1, we can find beta 1 that is equal to integral 0 to 1 s minus 5 by 6 plus beta 1 plus beta 2 d s. This is equal to half minus 5 by 6 plus beta 1 plus beta 2. This implies beta 1 equal to minus 1 third plus beta 1 plus beta 2 and from here we find beta 2 this is equal to 1 third. 
So, just substituting y x into the expression for beta 1 immediately we have obtained beta 2 equal to 1 third and hence y x is modified to x minus 5 by 6 plus beta 1 plus 1 third. So, that is equal to x minus half plus beta 1 this is the expression for y x and substituting this expression into the expression for beta 2 we find one third equal to beta 2 equal to integral 0 to 1 s minus half plus beta 1 whole square d s. So, this is equal to integral 0 to 1 s square d s plus 2 into beta 1 minus half integral 0 to 1 s d s plus beta 1 minus half whole square integral 0 to 1 d s. And after evaluating these integrals we can find one third that is equal to one third plus beta 1 minus half plus beta 1 minus half this whole square. So, one third cancels from both sides and solving for beta 1 we find two values of beta 1 is actually plus minus half. So, already we have obtained that y equal to x minus half plus beta 1. So, therefore, substituting beta 1 equal to find equal to half we find y equal to x is a solution and for beta 1 is equal to minus half we find y equal to 1 sorry x minus 1 is a solution. So, although the given problem does not possesses any particular parameter like lambda, but still the nonlinear integral equation possesses two solutions one is y x equal to x and other one is y x is equal to x minus 1. So, this is actually the method of direct computation by which you can solve the freedom integral equation which are nonlinear integral equations with separable kernels. Now, we just look at the Adomian decomposition method how that particular method can be applicable to the case of uh, solving nonlinear freedom integral equation. So, we are going to use the decomposition method. to solve nonlinear Fredholm integral equation is given by y x equal to f x plus lambda integral a to b k of x comma s g of y s d s. So, first of all we can assume the form of y x as sigma n runnings from 0 to infinity y n x and this Adomian decomposition method says we have to assume a form for g y x also where g y x this is assumed to be summation n runnings from 0 to infinity b n x. Now, you just try to understand in the previous examples for example, where g y was equal to y square. Then if we assume y x is equal to n runnings from 0 to infinity y n x and we assume g y x equal to sigma n runnings from 0 to infinity b n x for existence of the solution and validity of this technique we need some relations should be satisfied by y n and beta n's. I am not going to 
prove the result from where we can get this relation, but for general nonlinear function g we can define first few iterates which shows the relation between b 0, b 1, b 2, b 3 and so on with y 0, y 1, y 2 and so on. So, these relations are given by b 0 x this is equal to g of y 0 x this one. Then b 1 x this is equal to y 1 x multiplied with g dot y 0 x. Here g dot y 0 x means we have to differentiate g y with respect to y and then substituting y equal to y 0 x we can find g dot y 0 x. Then b 2 x this is equal to y 2 x g dot y 0 x plus y 1 square x by 2 or factorial to g double dot y 0 x. Then b 3 x this is equal to y 3 x g dot y 0 x plus y 1 x y 2 x g double dot y 0 x plus y 1 cube x divided by factorial 3 g triple dot y 0 x and so on. So, in this way we can find the relations between b 0, b 1, b 2, b 3 and so on with y 0, y 1, y 2, y 3 and expressions for b 0, b 1, b 2, b 3 in terms of y 0, y 1, y 2 and so on is determined by the nature of the nonlinear functions. So, there is no unique expressions for b 0, b 1, b 2 in terms of explicitly y 0, y 1, y 2, but those are determined by the nature of the function g. Once with these particular expressions, now if we substitute the expression for y x and g y x into the given uh, integral equation, then we find sigma n runnings from 0 to infinity y n x this is equal to f x plus lambda integral 0 to infinity k of x comma s sigma n runnings from 0 to infinity b n s d s and assuming the interchangeability of the integral and the summation and then equating the terms from both side following this rule that y 0 x equal to f x then y 1 x is equal to lambda integral a 2 b k of x comma s b 0 s d s b 0 s d s then y 2 x is equal to lambda integral a to b k of x comma s b 1 s d s and so on. So, we can find out y 0, y 1, y 2 and so on. Now, with this assumption if you just recall the expressions for b 0, b 1 and so on, you can see that b 0 x is a function of y 0 only. So, first of all we are assuming that y 0 x equal to f x that means we are equating y 0 x from left side with f x on the right hand side. So, that means with this result y 0 x equal to f x now y 0 is known. Next we equate y 1 x from left side with the term lambda integral a to b k x comma s b 0 s d s from the right. So, now b 0 s is known because b 0 is a function of y 0 only and therefore, we can evaluate this y 1 x. Once y 1 x is known then using the relation between b 0 b 1 and y 0 y 1 
we can understand that now b 1 x is a known function. So, once b 1 x is a known function then equating y 2 x from the left with lambda integral a to b k x s b 1 s d s we can find y 2 x. So, proceeding in this way we can find the terms that is the adomian polynomials y 0, y 1, y 2, y 3 and so on and summing up with all these terms we can find solution to the given problem. So, in the compact form we can write that y 0 x is equal to f x and y n plus 1 x this is equal to lambda integral a to b k of x comma s b n s d s this is valid for n greater than equal to 0. So, using this formula we can calculate the iterates or the you can say adomian polynomials y 0, y 1 and so on and using the relation between b 0, b 1, b 2 with y 0, y 1, y 2 and so on. Now, we first consider the relation between b 0, b 1, b 2 with y 0, y 1, y 2 for the particular case that is g y is equal to y square and then we use these expressions in order to find out solution of an nonlinear Fredholm integral equation involving the term y square s. So, as per results that we have written b 0 x is equal to y 0 square x b 1 x this is equal to y 1 x into 2 y 0 x g y equal to y square g dot y equal to 2 y this 2 y evaluated at y 0 x gives 2 y 0 x. So, therefore, b 1 x will be 2 y 0 x into y 1 x then b 2 x b 2 x is equal to y 2 x multiplied with 2 y 0 x plus y 1 square x by 2 into 2 because second derivative of g with respect to y is 2 and therefore, g double dot y 0 is simply 2 and therefore, b 2 x is comes out to be 2 y 0 x multiplied with y 2 x plus y 1 square x. Then b 3 x this is equal to y 3 x multiplied with 2 y 0 x plus y 1 x y 2 x into g double dot y 0 x. So, this is 2 and last term is equal to 0 because third derivative of g with respect to y is 0. So, therefore, b 3 x is equal to 2 y 0 x y 3 x plus 2 y 1 x y 2 x and you can find next iterates. Now, we use these results for b 0, b 1, b 2, b 3 in terms of y 0, y 1, y 2, y 3 for g y equal to y square in order to solve a nonlinear Fredholm integral equation. And here we are going to solve the same example that we first considered um, uh, which we have solved using direct computation method and that is the equation y x is equal to 1 plus lambda integral 0 to 1 s of y square s d s. So, here f x equal to 1. So, using the formula y 0 x equal to f x we can find y 0 x equal to 1. Then y 1 x that is equal to lambda times integral 0 to 1 s b 0 s d s 
Now, B 0 s is equal to Y 0 s. So, this is 1. So, this will comes out to be lambda by 2. Then Y 2 x equal to lambda integral 0 to 1 s B 1 s d s. Now, B 1 x it was 2 Y 0 Y 1 x y 0 equal to 1, y 1 x equal to lambda by 2. So, this will be equal to lambda integral 0 to 1 s into 2 into 1 into lambda by 2 d s and this will be equal to lambda square by 2. And similarly, y 3 x is equal to lambda integral 0 to 1 s b 2 s d s and this is equal to lambda integral 0 to 1 s 2 into 1 into lambda square by 2 plus lambda square by 4 d s because b 2 x was 2 y 0 x y 2 x plus y 1 square x. So, that means 2 into 1 into lambda square by 2 plus lambda by 2 whole square. So, this one and after evaluating the integral and little bit simplification, we find this is equal to 5 lambda cube divided by 8. So, therefore, adding these particular quantities 1 lambda by 2 lambda square by 2 and 5 lambda cube by 8, we find solution to the given problem is 1 plus lambda by 2 plus lambda square divided by 2 plus 5 lambda cube divided by 8 plus dot dot up to infinity. This is the solution. Now, in this case, we have a nonlinear equation. This equation when we have solved with respect um, using the direct computation method, then we have obtained two solutions and here we are getting one solution. And now, we have to verify whether this solution is matching with any one of them or not. So, that means, this gives us a new solution apart from what we have obtained earlier or not that we have to verify. But if you calculate this expression that is 1 minus 2 lambda the square root. So, that is actually 1 minus 2 lambda whole to the power half and expanding this particular quantity in a negative uh, binomial series and assuming that uh, 2 lambda less than 1. Uh, therefore, you can find that lambda less than half restriction will come out from the condition for uh, binomial series expansion of this particular expression. And after expanding in binomial series, you find this is equal to 1 minus lambda minus lambda square by 2 minus lambda cube divided by 2 minus 5 lambda to the power 4 divided by 8 minus dot dot up to infinity. And with this expression for root over 1 minus 2 lambda, you can find 1 minus root over 1 minus 2 lambda divided by lambda, this is equal to 1 plus lambda by 2 plus lambda square by 2 plus 5 lambda cube divided by 8 plus dot dot up to infinity. So, that means it is matching with the solution what we have obtained with Adomian decomposition method. So, by this you can verify that Adomian decomposition method is not giving you a new solution which is not coincident with either of the solution what we have obtained from direct computation method. But this method has a limitation for this particular problem that it fails to capture or produce the other solution that is 1 plus root over 1 minus 2 lambda divided by lambda. So, with this example on one side we are uh, try to understand how the method works in order to find out solution this problem and also this method has a limitation that it is unable to capture or unable to produce both the solutions what we have obtained by direct computation method. And of course, you can apply 
this type of adomian decomposition method for Volterra integral uh, equations also. So, in that case decomposition method for nonlinear Volterra integral equations we have only one difference that is with the evaluation of the iterates. Here y 0 x will be equal to f x and y n plus 1 x this will be equal to lambda integral a 2 x k of x comma s b n s d s. So, these are the formula for evaluating the iterates uh, y 0, y 1 and so on for Volterra integral equation that is non-linear Volterra integral equation which is given by that is y x is equal to f x plus lambda integral a to x k of x comma s g of y s d s and of course, in this formula b n s these are defined as earlier. I am not going to consider any particular example here, you can uh, find some examples in several places and try to solve it at your own. Next we come to the series solution method. for nonlinear Volterra integral equations. Although I have written here nonlinear Volterra integral equation, but method that we are going to discuss that is for a specific type of nonlinear Volterra integral equations, those are given by y x is equal to f x plus lambda integral a to x k of x comma s y n s d s. Once we will be discussing the method, then you can understand why I am considering here the particular form y to the power n here and that is just for simplicity and understanding of the method. The method is that we assume that this equation possesses a series solution of the form sigma m running from 0 to infinity c m x to the power m. So, that means we are intended to find a solution in this particular format c 0 plus c 1 x plus c 2 x square plus c 3 x cube plus dot dot up to infinity. Now, in case of y to the power n, we can calculate first few terms of y n x and for example, say these are denoted by d 0 plus d 1 x plus d 2 x square plus d 3 x cube and so on. Then substituting these two expressions into the given equation and after evaluating the integrals, we can equate like powers of x from both sides. And here this d 0, d 1, d 2, d 3 and so on all of them are actually functions of c 0, c 1, c 2 and so on. So, depending upon the uh, evaluation of this d 0, d 1, d 2 in terms of c 0, c 1, c 2 and then equating the like powers of x from the both sides, we have some nonlinear system of equations for these unknown quantities c 0, c 1, c 2 and so on. So, if we are able to solve those nonlinear algebraic equations involving c 0, c 1, c 2 and so on, we will be able to find out 
solution of this particular problem. And we can explain this idea with help of one example. We consider this example that is y x is equal to 1 minus x square minus x cube by 3 plus integral 0 to x y square s d s. Here we are assuming y x is equal to sigma n running from 0 to infinity c n x to the power n. So, now if we calculate y square x, so that is equal to sigma n running from 0 to infinity c n x n whole square and looking at first few terms of this particular series, uh, we can find this is equal to c 0 square plus 2 c 0 c 1 x plus c 1 square plus 2 c 0 c 2 x square plus dot dot up to infinity. So, if you just uh, compare with the previous discussion that uh, d 0 is now equal to c 0 square d 1 is equal to 2 c 0 c 1 d 2 equal to c 1 square plus 2 c 0 c 2 and so on. So, this relation between d 0, d 1, d 2, d 3 and so on can be obtained in terms of c 0, c 1, c 2 in the cases where nonlinear functions involved with the nonlinear integral equation is of the form y to the power n x. In other cases, it is very difficult to find out this type of uh, relation between d j's with c i's. Now, if we substitute this expression into the given integral equation, then we actually find that sigma n running from 0 to infinity c n x to the power n that is equal to 1 minus x square minus x cube by 3 plus integral 0 to x c 0 square plus 2 c 0 c 1 s plus c 1 square plus 2 c 0 c 2 s square plus dot dot up to infinity d s. And therefore, after evaluating this integral, we find c 0 plus c 1 x plus c 2 x square plus c 3 x cube plus dot dot up to infinity, this is equal to 1 minus x square minus x cube by 3 plus c 0 square x plus c 0 c 1 x square plus c 1 square 2 c 0 c 2 x cube divided by 3 plus dot dot up to infinity. After rearranging these terms, we find this is equal to 1 plus c 0 square x plus c 0 c 1 minus 1 into x square plus c 1 square plus 2 c 0 c 2 minus 1 x cube plus dot dot up to infinity. Then equating like powers from both sides, we find c 0 equal to 1, then c 1 is equal to c 0 square, c 2 this is equal to c 0 c 1 minus 1, then c 3 this is equal to 1 third c 1 square plus 2 c 0 c 2 minus 1 and so on. So, from the first relation we find c 0 this is equal to 1, from the second that is c 1 equal to c 0 square we find c 1 equal to 1, then c 2 is equal to 
0 because C 2 equal to C 0 C 1 minus 1. So, 1 minus 1 equal to 0, then C 3 this is equal to uh, C 1 square plus 2 C 0 C 2 minus 1 third. So, substituting there you can find this is also equal to 0 and you can verify all other constant that is C 4 and onwards if you uh, solve this you find all of them are exactly equal to 0 and therefore, the series for y x comes out to be that is 1 plus x and you can verify this y x equal to 1 plus x is solution to the nonlinear equation. So, in case this nonlinear function involved with the Volterra integral equation is of the form y n x, then you can make an attempt to solve this type of nonlinear Volterra integral equation with help of this series solution method. So, at this point, I stop uh, discussions on this uh, nonlinear integral equation, but before completing this lecture, I like to mention that the materials I have covered in this lecture, these are available in four books. Uh, these four books are number one, a fast course in integral equations by A M was was this is a world scientific book. Then number two introduction to integral equations with applications A Z Z D number three linear integral equations by R P Kanwal and number 4 the chapter on integral equation under this book that is methods of applied mathematics by F B Hildebrand. And if you are interested to have a look to some advanced level books, then these two books are uh, very well written books. Number one that is integral equations by F G Tricomi and the book that is linear integral equations by W V love it. And before concluding, I just like to remark that in all these books you find uh, several discussions on uh, integral equations is method of solution and other advanced level treatment, but in the book by was was the um, Adomian decomposition method and modified Adomian decomposition method are uh, discussed. And in that book you find some further references where some advanced techniques for uh, Adomian decomposition method to solve some complicated uh, linear and nonlinear integral equations are also discussed. So, in this lecture series we are mainly focused on linear integral equations, but in the last lecture I just consider two three examples on nonlinear integral equation just want to give you 
the essence of bifurcation concept of bifurcation involved with the nonlinear integral equations. So, thank you for your attention.